Welcome to my session. In my session, I'll talk about how to build a secure, efficient, complex full supply chain at scale. Please enjoy my session. First, I'll introduce myself a little bit. My name is Tang Zhong Yi. You can call me Jerry. I'm a program manager of Baidu Open Source Program Office. I have worked in open source community for over 20 years. I'm a committer of Mozilla, GLOME, and Apache Foundation. I'm an advocate of open source in China, and also one of the founders of Open Chain China Working Group. Here's my agenda. First, I'll talk about what is for supply chain, any risks for it, and the challenge for my company. Then I'll talk about solution for it and my practice. Next, I will summarize. First, what is for supply chain? For supply chain means the operation of consuming force F free open software within a company when runs daily businesses. The challenge is just like any supply chain within a company. How do I trust my own open source supply chain? Is it safe to use? Are risks are low? Is it efficient? Are costs unknown? Why? Because today, people don't write software from scratch. Instead, they assemble them. Here's one picture from Linux Foundation. It says that in today's modern software, we use 90% of code in open source code. Here's one example. Engineers start an open source framework, then write its customer's code, then combine it with open source library to solve the real world problems. You can see that the customer code is only 10%. The 90% are open source code. So it's very, very important for companies. Force is free to use, and it has also risks. It may have security code. It may have bugs, core downs, hangs, memory leaks. It may also have complex issues, GPL related and patterns related. Here are some cases. The first case. It's a very famous case. Security holes cause business losses. You may have heard it before. The Equifax breach and online Apache stress vulnerabilities cost more than $400 million and affected 140 million people. Whoa, it's crazy. And here's another two cases caused by software bugs, cause businesses outages. It's real cases in my company. Case one, one online ticket service broken due to a CPU harm bugs while using an old version of FastJSON, which caused losing 500,000 RMB revenues. FastJSON is an open source library very popular in China. It's a Java library to pass JSON data. Here is another case. One advertisement service failed due to one known point box in the keeper software, losing several million RMB revenues. And some cases about complex issues, such as GPL 
violations and pattern terms. I'm not an expert of legal, so you can Google Nixis WRT 454G and uh, react to the pattern issues on Google. You can get more information there. So, the whole picture of first supply chain management here is uh, inside the company. We collaborate on our code, but we inbound free open software ABC from our stream, and then outbound we release it to our customer. We can release to as a online service, and we release as a software, and we release with hardware. The status in my company previously are not good. It's not very compliant because nobody care about IP issues when importing OSS code and releasing their own. It's not very secure. Many usage of open source software with no high risky CVE bugs. The fixing process is quite slow and not guaranteed, and it's not very efficient. The huge duplicate open source code in our internal code management system, and updating process is quite painful. Here's one case. When a home bus founded in fast system 1.2.51, cause revenue loss in one product. We want to avoid other similar problems also. What do we do? We notified with emails and pushed all engineers to check by themselves and fix them by hand. But after three months, the status was still unknown. Engineers told me that no one was assigned to work on this issue. Why? Because this method was not efficient and did not work well. If we are forced to fix it by hand, that's a huge work and it's not going to scale at all. So the, the real problem for open so for supply chain management is to how to build a secure, efficient Compliance for supply chain at scale. Thanks for Open Chain Project. It provides us a great framework. Open Chain is a standard to describe what organization could and should do to address force compliance efficiently. It identifies key recommended process and record keeping requirements for effective force management. And it's not only compliance. You can check out openchainproject.org for more information. It defines the whole process. We need training, we need policy, and we need process. It borrows idea from Demi. This picture is from Derek Wicks on Oscar 2017. It says that from Demi's idea, supply chain need to use fewer and better component suppliers. Use only the highest quality components part and continuously track when and where components are used. So, as the idea practice in close, when inbound open source software, engineers ensure to use high quality ones and limited ones from trusted suppliers. Keep a record when consuming them. Know the license and the pattern 
meditation of them before using it. And when outbound engineers ensure to keep a software bone when releasing, fulfill the RP obligation of this force. Update periodically when being notified by security, SRE, and legal teams. Talk is cheap, but how to implement? There are many challenges. The real challenge for my company is that there are massive force supply and demands around the world. And there are so many engineers and reports in my company. The engineers' habits are bad and we are lack of resources. The first challenge the massive force supply and demands. According to the report of Zone Attack, there are 3.7 million unique packages in central Melbourne repository. The download is increased dramatically. And for JavaScript, the 800 key unique packages in central NPM repository. The download rate is increased even bigger. So, on average, developers have access to more than 21 thousand new open source software components released every day since 2018. The second challenge is that there are so many engineers and repos inside my company. My company has over 15k engineers that are working on over 100k reports every day. And the 3 million commits last year and 400 million code changes last year. Here is the third challenge. The engineers bad developing habits. Engineers are not aware of false risk. So we choose whatever code they like to use. Engineers are not willing to update for software version if they have already finished integrating. And some engineers like to commit for resource code into their product repo together with their own codes. And we are lack our resources the tool engineer resources, legal resources, and security engineer resources are all very limited. How to handle? So the only solution is automation. I have to use tools automatically as much as possible. And I need to teamwork, work with legal security tools teams and we might need to be agile. Need reaching with small steps, set the priorities, and focuses on the highest one. So what I do, I set up a virtual team, including guys from legal, security, and tools. I line up our goals and priorities. We set up our action plan interested steps for the last three years. Here is our action plan, three steps for the last three years. First, record OSS usage automatically to locate and fix high risks quickly. Second, generate software bomb for some core product team. The last one is to complete the whole chain management and get open chain certificate to approve that we have done it very well. And the first step is focus on here in the right circle. Release is online service is our highest 
are already. The task list for our first step is that we set up an internal Maven server and NPM server first. Force engineer to use them and ban all commits in the repos if it contains OSS code, source code. We define policy, we use training, and we enhance tools. Then we index every repos and says permanent.sml or packaging.json log files to build force dependency data. When a survey bar found it, locate this affected repos, send security tickets to push engineer to fix them ASAP. Why we choose this? Because Baidu is an international company. Most of our business is online service, and the risk of license compliance is low. We cannot live without open source. Now we can bear one case of OSF4, but we cannot tolerate duplicate cases of OSF4 and a slow fixing process. We select Java and JavaScript first because they are more popular in Baidu. Actual practices. We define measures metrics, collecting metrics data before action. Then we announce the open source policy and train all our engineers. We plan two developing scenarios for new created codes and for existing old codes. Training is very, very important. We must indicate our engineers to do things correctly. So we organize several offline training in several sites, Beijing office, Shanghai office, and Shenzhen office to tell our engineers how to use open source software correctly. Then we provide online video training for every engineer. Then we execute online exam with video training for every engineer. So every engineer is required to finish the video training and then pass the online exam. And for new Create code with a last policy company wide. A GPR license code are not permitted to check in. Some high security OSS code are not permitted. Next, just two. We also in screen into code submit hook. If the patch is a GPR or related with OSS. Risk OSS commit will be failed. If the patch contains OSS source code, commit will be failed too. In this way, we can make sure that no new OSS code will be entered into the code repository illegally. Then we index every repos and collect the data. We index pom.sml or grand.sml for Java program. We index python.json slash log for JavaScript projects. Then we build a dependency map and import them as API. After each, we can set up our open source software security ticket system with set security fixing process and allows it. Then we get affected report data, how many reports and who are the owners from the API we get already. When a CV bus reported, we can file service tickets to report the owner to push them to fix it. Here is one case. 
still fast.json. We need to update fast.json to version 1.2.66 to avoid a newly founded high risk bugs. Then we identify that over 300 reports are affected. Then we send out 300 more security tickets to these owners to put them to face. In one week, we check with the tickets and check with the repo status. All are clear and are verified. That's, in, that's great. It's only the first step. We need to move on with more language support. Go, PHP, CNC++. We need to scan every report to force engineers to migrate to use Maven and NPM instead, if they haven't used it before. But building force supply chain is a long journey. It's more than complex. It should be integrated with every activity of daily work for engineers and project managers. We will keep going to make it more secure, more efficient, and more complex. Last, I recommend that we can take a look to work with Open Chain. It's a standard. It's a clashing of best practice in industry. It's also a community. Many engineers, lawyers, and the program managers are working together and share their practice. Please check out openchainproject.org for more information. Okay, that's all. Any questions? Thanks.